In today's episode of Light and Color, we'll be looking at five lights and mistakes when it comes to portraiture in the studio. Hey, what's up guys? My name is Kujuju and welcome back to the channel. If you haven't subscribed yet, kindly make sure to subscribe before you leave. Turn on the bell notification icon to get notified all the time when I drop new videos and also leave me a thumbs up at the end of today's video. So without wasting much time, let's just get into today's video. Alright guys, welcome back. And the very first thing I really want to talk about is placing your light so high that you get raccoon eyes. Many a times I've, I've even been, you know, I've, I've gone through such problems before where I place my light so high that I create raccoon shadows, which is a characteristic of shooting around 12 o'clock outdoors. I, I, I place the light so high that I create raccoon shadows underneath my subject's eye. And I've seen that in a lot of, you know, portrait pictures flying around on the internet. Many a times we try and do this overhead lighting where we place the lights right above the subject, trying to mimic what we call um, the 12 o'clock sunlight outdoors. And some way, somehow, we fail to realize that we need to light the upper left side of the model you're shooting. So mostly, I would advise you lower your light in as much as you're trying to do this overhead lighting Right, lower your light such that the upper lid of your subject's eye is well lit. You can also go about tilting your light source 45 degree angle to the model, which is always and which always will work for any kind of shoot when you're placing it 45 degrees to the right side of your model or to the left side of your model or right in front of your model. Make sure your light source or your modifier is tilted to the 45 degree angle just to make sure that the upper lid of the model you're shooting is well lit to avoid those raccoon eyes you see whenever it is you're shooting in the studio. So I spoke about placing your lights such that you don't create raccoon eyes. I'm not going to show you that raccoon problem. You've seen a lot in many other posts. If you, can, if you really want to see how that one looks, just take a step outside, shoot at 12 o'clock, or try and shoot overhead lights and with the light all the way up. Um, out of the sight of the subject you're shooting. I'm currently using a bigger box, a 150 deep box from Photoplay. So I can't do that with the deep box. The reason for the choice of modifier is to make sure I have very soft and deep contrasting light. So what I usually do is to make sure the light is a feet away from my subject. Let me see. Roughly a feet away from the subject. And when I'm shooting portraits in the studio, I try as much as possible to make sure this side of the modifier can directly translate to the under or that um, underneath the chain of the subject I'm shooting. So what I will do is to raise this up and make sure it's right under here. Usually, if you want to take full body portraits and make sure your light hits everywhere, this is where you bend the light in a 45 degree angle, like I said earlier. But that is not what I want to do today. I don't want the light spilling all the way to the ground. I want that drama down there and the light hitting the feet. So I think the fall off is what will hit the leg. And I'll get to that gradient feel when it comes to lighting. So placing the light. 45 degree angle, a feet away from your subject. You can choose to do either one or both. Or if you have a bigger modifier, don't bother about the 45 degree because, or yeah, don't bother about the 45 degree. At the end of the day, it's so big that the catch light will be created in the subject's eyes. So let me just take a quick test shot. I'll probably move the light first. All right, let's see. I'm using the grid also just because I don't want my light to spill around. If I wanted it to spill around, I'll remove the grid and 
this 150 box will bounce the lights everywhere. But since I don't want it to spill around, the grid just makes the light travel in one spectrum or in a straight line or however you want to put it. Right, so it's just going to hit my subjects. Oh, I didn't introduce it. This is Irene. I have a video with her back last year. Was it February, December? Where, April, Easter, right? Yeah. I can link it up here. Just go check that video. So, oh, she also has a YouTube channel, which she hasn't posted in like four months. <laughs> right, so the beautiful Irina. Go check it out. Stop letting my flowers fall. Please, whoever is a shooter, I'm not the one. Okay. So, I should have spoken about my gear. I'm using a Canon 5D Mark IV, a 15mm STM lens, a Godox STC trigger, a Godox AD600, and this 150 dude box from Photoplays. I have a strip box right on top of here, a 130cm by a 30 by 160cm softbox modified modifier with the Godox AD100 in it. And I have another strip box too where the key light is coming from. So let's see. Okay, one last shot. Can you look towards the light? Chin up. Open the lips. Make sure you tip to your left too. So bring the left one closer to you. Let's yell that's one. Why is this girl smiling? Right, let's try that one last time. Okay. So that direction of light now just hit her face and not the leg area. The grid is giving me that uh, um, restriction or limitation to allowing the light to hit the leg area. So I like how dramatic this side of the frame looks and I like how the light is hitting her not too much. The next thing I get to see all the time is no catch light in the subjects you're shooting eye. It's more like a continuation from fixing those raccoon eye problem with tilting the light so just so that um, it hits the upper lid of the subjects you're shooting. So when you do that from the first point, the same issue to the second point where you create catch light in your model's eyes. Many a times I've seen portraits, of course, which don't have catch lights in the subject's eyes. Sometimes you see it's looking weird and you have people trying to edit the catch light into the subject's eyes. Just so you know, getting it right in camera is the very first step to making sure your image looks better in post-production. So moving your lights down a notch from that high up um, lighting to a lower lighting, tilting to the 45 degree angle, making sure your model chains up when you're shooting or making sure the light is not so far away from your subject creates catch lights in your eye. You can also use the help of reflectors to bounce back light into the subject's eye to create, you know, two catch lights. And at the end of the day, you see I know two on the right side, two on the left side, creating in total four catch lights in the eye. So creating catch lights should be also another mistake you should avoid and fix when it comes to portraiture in the studio. Right. So the next thing also I spoke about is creating catch lights in the eye. Already this big softbox is creating the biggest catch lights I'll ever get. So I don't really have to say a lot if I take a close-up portrait, right? So lean forward. Yeah, lean forward. Exactly. You don't send the face this way. Yeah. Send the face this way. Okay. Bring the face towards me. Okay. Lovely. Turn up. Bring the eyeballs in. Here, here, my hand. Open the lips. So if I show this frame on the screen, or let me, if I can, if you can see it. If I show this frame on the screen, I'll just show it on the screen. 
if i show this frame on the screen you can see the catch light created in her eyes All right that brings the photo to life whenever it is you're shooting portraits in the studio the third thing i usually see is lack of depth when it comes to lighting in the studio you know studio shots are created in such a way that you have total control over whatever it is you're doing when it comes to lighting and if you've been with me here on my youtube channel you know i have thought a lot about um, lighting systems one key point lighting two key point lighting three key point lighting and four key point lighting you know technique so make sure you check a video which i did last year i'm going to link it up here make sure you check it out try and incorporate these lighting techniques when it comes to shooting portraits in the studio such that at the end of the day you probably get um, the depth you're looking for when it comes to creating you know um, depth and creating definition or creating interesting portraits when it comes to using the light in the studio so i'm sure i'm going to um, show you the flat lighting which i usually see all the time which works sometimes right but doesn't speak well of you as a professional photographer who is looking at improving your craft when it comes to lighting in the studio so incorporate these lighting techniques which i'm going to link up here of course you're going to see some of them in the video whilst i'm shooting and yeah make sure you create depth with the kind of lighting systems you have in the studio buttressing the points from the third point which is you know creating depth with um, lighting in the studio which you can also incorporate what we call the inverse square law which states that the further you move the light away from your subject the greater a fall off of light that will hit the background so creating separation between your subjects and the background is key to creating depth when it comes to shooting in the studio so when you move your subjects further away from the background towards or closer to the light source your model or the subject you're shooting looks well lit and the light fall of hitting the background will create that separation where it shows that oh the model you're shooting the subject you're shooting is not so close to the background and at the end um, getting that depth we've been talking about in the previous point so the inverse square law helps in creating separation when it comes to you know shooting um, models or subjects in the studio you can also create separation using different sources of light from the earlier points where i spoke about you watching the uh, videos on how the various lighting um, signatures or lighting techniques you can also add a second light to your shoot if you don't have four or five more lights you can have a second light it can be a speed light it can be um, a led light it can be an ambience light make sure it works for you when it comes to creating separation with a second light you can have your key light 45 degrees to your models uh, right hand side or left hand side and place the backlight or the kicker light also in the opposite direction of where the key light is so if your key light is 45 degrees to camera it should, yeah, it should be camera right the kicker light should be camera left behind the subject to create that separation you can also use it as a backlight you know there are different ways to create separation with the second light source illumination right illumination from a light source declines with the increase of distance she repeats what i just said the further the light travels the less light the subject will receive oh she's right in a way when i move when i move the light further away from my subject i'm going to have um, less light hitting here so if i move this um, i think two meters away the square of two meters will be four meters the inverse of that four meters will be one fourth so she'll be getting one fourth of the light intensity coming from the main light right so if i have my flash power at 1 over 16 1 over 16 times 1 over 4 will give you the amount of power she will get on her and the remaining fall off will be the background so that is why we have um when you're shooting with one light and no other light at all you can move the subject so far away from the background that even if it's a white background it turns into a gray background so that is what the inverse square law is all about that is what you can also use to create separation but currently i have three different lights lighting this scene so i'm creating all the separation i need with the three different lights so i have one hair light like i mentioned earlier and i have another um backlight or kicker light remaining from the side of where the key light is coming from usually 
that uh, usually you find the kicker light on the opposite side of where the key light is coming from but you can also have it uh, where the key light is coming from and increase the intensity such that you can see that rim or that separation from the background and you can see the softness coming from the key light so i want to show you how that works i'll turn off the hair light and the kicker light and just take a picture with the just the key light right then i'll turn on the hair light and take a picture with that also so you see the hair light hitting the background creating the separation i need then i'll add the kicker light then i'll add the kicker light also and there you can see the light hitting even that of the curtain to create more separation so if i should put this on the screen i'll then show you that um rim light rimming my subject from the kicker light in as much as i have my key light coming in from the same direction as the kicker light so this is how it's looking you look like a what <laughs> the last point i would really want to talk about is dealing with color cast if you've watched my previous video where i spoke about the must haves in um, every photo studio i spoke about um, you know how to deal with color cast avoiding any color cast you don't want in your shadows mostly color cast are found in the shadows of um, every shoot you, you go through even if you use five lights any um any hint of shadows in the said image would have the color cast of your home studio or the studio space you find yourself in the last thing i i spoke about was color cast um so currently i have no color cast in the studio because i'm using a lot of lights to probably fill my frame i have this bounce card bouncing lights right into my shadows so i have much more information in my shadows to pull out if i had switched this to the black flag to you know take away light from the shadows whatever um, ambient color in my room or in the studio you see it's in here so to deal with color cast you can choose to you know open up the information in your shadows by using a v flat a white v flat or a reflector or better still add another light source just to make sure you don't have you know darker shadows just so that you don't get information also i did mention you should have an idea where either your studio, you don't, if you don't want any annoying color, just make sure your studio or whatever space you're shooting at doesn't have the color you don't need in your shadows. Most of the photographers I know shoot with one light, so this will help for all those who shoot with one light. But if you shoot with more than one light, you can have that information or that color cast not being seen in the image. One bonus tip I would want to mention is not all soft lighting is good lighting i recently found this out when i was you know shooting one of my recent videos on light and color right usually we say the closer the light sources to the subject or the bigger the light source in really uh, with relative to the subject size the softer the light right so looking at me right now i have a big light source to my right the closer it is to me the softer the light you would get and usually when it comes to light and color we will want light so much that we would also want to see the color on the subject or on the model you're shooting when the light is so close to your subject right and the light intensity is not well tuned or the setting is not well put in i find this most of the time you realize majority of the image has a whole lot of highlights than midtones we fail to realize that midtones are where we find each and every color we want on whatever subject it is you're shooting you don't find information in your highlights you don't find color information in your shadows you find them in your midtones they are different shades of midtones so whatever it is you see in your highlights is just pure white whatever you see in your shadows is pure black and the color you see on the subject you're shooting is different shades or are different shades of midtones so make sure your soft lights and the intensity coming from the modifier you're using is so much fixed such that you have a lot of color information in both your highlights and your midtones and a little bit in your shadows and not overkill the soft lighting so much that your midtones will be eradicated and you just have a lot of highlights with less shadows so 
Thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you would learn and practice all these pointers I put out to you guys. Make sure you practice. Practicing is key. Trust me. You don't just listen to this and go and sit there and expect to, you know, have this in your next shoot. Make sure you practice. Call somebody. Hit up somebody. Try and collaborate. That is how you practice and become better at what you do. So I hope you practice whatever it is I said to you guys from the beginning of the video to the end of the video. Leave me a thumbs up because it helps me so much. And I know some people are not subscribed to the channel because I usually watch my analytics and I have a lot of people watching who are not subscribed. Kindly subscribe to the channel because you know it's helpful to me. Let me know down in the comment section below if you enjoyed everything I've been teaching from episode one to this particular episode and also let me know what you would want to see when it comes to the next episode of Lights and Color. Don't forget to subscribe as usual, leave a thumbs up, share this video and I'll see you in my next video. Peace. So yeah, let's take a couple of shots and let's just end the shoot. We're still going to now sit straight, sit at the edge of the... Okay. <laughs> Okay. Smile. Yes. Okay, so I love everything I'm seeing in the frame right now. I'll put them up. I hope to maybe share some raw photos. Can I share some of the pictures so that the people edit it? Okay. Right, so I'll probably share some of the raw photos for you guys to play around with it. And yeah, I love the outcome from the set. I hope you enjoyed the session. I hope you learned a thing or two about fixing your portraiture lights and mistakes. Yeah, that, that should be it for today's video. What do you have to do? Wait, but before that, people should go and pressure in a DM just so that you produce a video. Right. Have fun playing with my pictures, know my heart. <laughs> Have fun playing with her pictures, know her heart. But how would they get your heart? Ah, only God knows. Anyway. Alright, thank you so much for watching today's video. <laughs> Say God bless you, boy, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Tell them to subscribe. Subscribe, like, share, and learn. And learn. Peace.